Welcome back to another lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask me at the end of the presentation. As always, I highly encourage you to backtest this before utilizing it in your own trading, as when I first learned this, I was absolutely mind blown. When using this with the unicorn model presented two weeks ago, or really any entry model, this will be the game changer for a lot of you guys. Continuing the current syllabus that I have in mind, we will be covering how the market moves in relation to internal and external range liquidity. Let me know if you have any specific topics you'd like me to cover in the future, and I will add it to my list. Once again, each lecture that I present ties into the trading model that I found consistency with, so stay tuned for the final reveal of my model on a future date. In today's lecture, I wanted to cover determining higher time frame bias with a simple concept that is very consistent. This concept alone is what majority of my narrative is built upon. So for those that have been asking me, how do I determine my daily bias? This one is for you. As always, for the sake of newer ICT traders, I will also cover what the PD arrays are required to utilize this concept. And in this case, we only need to know three types of inefficiencies in the markets. Before I begin, I want to give credit where it is due, and that would be to ICT and the MMXM trader. When looking for inefficiencies in the market, I look for three types of gaps, fair value gaps, liquidity voids, and volume imbalances. Fair value gaps are formations of three consecutive candles. A bullish fair value gap is created when candle number one's wick high does not meet candle number three's wick low. A bearish fair value gap is created when candle number one's wick low does not meet candle number three's wick high. Next, we have liquidity voids that are literal gaps in between candles and their wicks do not meet each other. The last inefficiency I look for is volume imbalances. These are also literal gaps between candles, but their wicks are meeting in this case. If you want a more in-depth explanation of these gaps, then I highly encourage you to watch the unicorn model entry lecture as I cover it in more depth there. Before I get into internal and external range liquidity, we first need to understand how the market books in terms of ICT's algorithmic theory. To my knowledge, the market is only ever doing one of two things, purging liquidity or balancing inefficiencies in the market. If we understand this, then we are already at a great advantage as we literally just simplified exactly what to look for, either a high, low, or imbalance in the market. The next understanding of how the market books is that the market is either going from internal to external range liquidity or going from external to internal range liquidity. I wanted to quote this from one of my mentors, the MMXM trader, as he opened up my eyes to how easy finding bias actually is. He said that understanding this concept is, and I quote, the foundation to building anticipatory skills for price movements and understanding where the market is likely drawing to. And having developed to where I am now, this statement couldn't be more true. When looking for internal and external range liquidity, we are really referring to the PD array matrix introduced by ICT. External range liquidity is the high and the low that defines the current dealing range, and internal range liquidity are highs and lows that reside within the current dealing range. Inefficiencies are all of the gaps covered early in this lecture, fair value gaps, liquidity voids, and volume imbalances. For the sake of simplification, I refer to external range liquidity as any high or low, and internal range liquidity as any inefficiency. When there are multiple inefficiencies, the premium inefficiency when bearish and discounted inefficiency when bullish will always be higher probability, although it may not always revisit them. I would like to determine which gaps are going to be left open are based on time, displacement, RDRBs, and market maker models. I will cover these concepts in future lectures as well, but for now, I want to keep it as simple as this is the first time I'm introducing this concept in my teachings. Now that we understand what we are looking for in the market, I wanted to cover time frame alignment as well so that you understand when to utilize a higher time frame level 
in relation to its lower time frame structure. When we trade into a monthly level, we look at our daily structure. When we trade into a weekly level, we look at our four hour structure. When we trade into a daily level, we look at our hourly structure. When we trade into a four hour level, we look at our 15 minute structure and so on and so forth. As time is fractal, so is time frame alignment, but this will be covered in a future lecture once again. For this lecture, I solely want to focus on determining a bias so that we are able to build a narrative to support it. And by this, I mean, I want to focus on the higher time frames so we get a general idea of direction of the market. Using that higher time frame level and utilizing the lower time frame in relation structure, we look for a change in the state of delivery. And this could be one of three things that I mainly look for. It would be a reaction from a order block, a market structure shift, or a balanced price range. A great example of this that I swing trade is Bitcoin on the weekly chart. So I mainly do my analysis on the weekly chart and enter my trades on the four hour chart used, utilizing that time frame alignment, right? So here we can see how just knowing this concept alone can make you a lot of money and help you understand your higher time frame narrative or bias. So in this case, we traded higher from alt uh, from the lows into this previous range high, which would be that external range liquidity from external range liquidity. I'm looking for that internal range liquidity from internal range liquidity. I'm looking for external range liquidity again, which would be this high. Once we took that external range liquidity, I'm looking for that internal range liquidity. We tapped into it here once, and then we tapped it twice, three times. And from here, we have a three drives pattern, which brings us higher. And this is where I began to long from, from down here. On the four hour, we had a confirmation. So I long from down here and to profit up here at this high, at this external range liquidity. And from here, what do we look for? Internal range liquidity once again. So this fair value gap right here, once we traded lower into it, once again, going on my four hour, I was looking for these lows to be taken out. I wanted this low to stay intact because we are also in, if you haven't noticed, this is a unicorn model on the weekly chart. So I wanted to see this respected if we were going higher. And once we did that, I longed around here, took profit at this external range liquidity once again, and we are where we are right now. And I'm expecting bearish price action now. Why? We took out external range liquidity. And we're also in a weekly unicorn on the left side of the chart. So I'm expecting at least into this inefficiency here. And if we go lower than these equal lows, and ultimately all of these lows would be nice, but these equal lows are what I'm looking at right now. So now is for the fun part, which is the examples. For this part of the lecture, I will be asking you guys what we're expecting. I'll leave a brief pause and then I'll reveal the answer. In this slide, I have annotated NQ once again at the start of Q3 of the year, just to keep things relevant and recent. So understanding how the market moves now based on price action, this is how I dissected general direction for NQ throughout the previous quarter of the year, which would be Q3. For some context of the monthly chart, we traded into a discounted inefficiency being internal range liquidity and are continuing a bullish trend. With this in mind, my current expectations for NQ is all time high as external range liquidity, but as an intraday trader, all I need to know is what is likely to be happening right now, which brings my attention to the high nested within the fair value gap to the left on the monthly chart, the high being external range liquidity and the discount fair value gap as the draw at the start of 2023 Q3. So this is the low of the monthly that I was looking at within this discounted inefficiency as internal range liquidity and continuing a bullish trend. I'm looking at all time highs up here as external range liquidity as an intraday trader. 
I am looking at this high right here nested within this inefficiency to see some sort of reaction to trade back into this discounted inefficiency, right? So we're going from internal reaching for the external but on the daily. I'm looking at this monthly level and paying attention to this monthly level right here, which would be a discounted inefficiency, that internal range liquidity. So once again, price trading from internal range liquidity to external range liquidity. And here we have another high right here, which I classify as an external range liquidity. And we're looking for internal range liquidity, which would be this drawn liquidity right here. Utilizing time frame alignment, we drop down to the daily chart, looking for a reason to trade lower into the discounted inefficiency on the monthly chart. Specifically, what I spotted that aligned with my expectations to go lower was one, a market structure shift with displacement. Two, quarterly shift into Q3 confirmed by a bearish SMT divergence with ES. And three, the bullish dealing range low was traded through with displacement. So here we have that initial market structure shift right here. Once we take that high nested within a fair value gap on the monthly time frame. Once we trade back under here, I was looking at this inefficiency, this fair value gap to trade higher. But on ES, we took this high and NQ did not, creating that bearish SMT divergence. And once that occurs, we continue to displace lower through this bullish dealing range low, which sparked that idea that we are going lower into this discounted inefficiency on that monthly chart. So in this slide, I highlight the new dealing range once that low is purged. And with all the context we have now, what would we look for? Well, now that external range liquidity has been purged, what do we look for? Internal range liquidity, which would be depicted by the premium imbalance within a bearish dealing range in this case, which would be right here. So this inefficiency or imbalance after purging external range liquidity, which would be this bullish range low initially, and we trade lower into this low, start trading higher, looking for that internal range liquidity, right? So external range liquidity back to internal range liquidity. So once again, now that we have tapped into internal range liquidity, what do we look for? External range liquidity which would be depicted by the bearish range low, which would be right here. So once we trade into external range liquidity here, internal range liquidity, we look for external range liquidity once again, and we trade lower. This is the new dealing range once that low is purged. And once again, now that we have purged external range liquidity, what do we look for, right? Because we took this external range liquidity, what we, we look for in this case. internal range liquidity, right? And in this case, we have two premium imbalances. Once we trade into that daily level, what would we look at for our confirmation? In this case, we would utilize that time frame alignment and look at our hourly chart for structure that would support our idea of price either going lower into the external range liquidity or higher into that second premium imbalance. Dropping down to the hourly chart, does market structure look like it's respecting the daily level? In this case, no. In fact, price displaced higher from the first imbalance. So in this case, we'd keep looking for the higher imbalance. So here we can see we traded up into this premium imbalance for the daily level. So on the hourly level, we're looking for that bearish structure. If we wanted to go lower from this daily level, in this case, we got bullish structure from the hourly using that time frame alignment and we displaced higher. 
So what does price look like it's reaching for right now? This premium imbalance. So resuming on the daily chart, understanding that the first imbalance has been invalidated, we are now looking for the higher imbalance in premium of the current bearish range, which would be this fair value gap right here. And this one has been traded through and invalidated, and we confirm this on the hourly chart. Okay, so now that internal range liquidity has been tapped into, which would be depicted by the higher premium imbalance within a bearish dealing range in this case, what do we look for, right? Because we took internal range liquidity now, what are we looking for? And again, that external range liquidity, which would be depicted by the bearish range low, right? So in this case, we tapped into the internal range liquidity and we're looking for that external range liquidity until we trade into our monthly drawn liquidity. This is the new dealing range once the low is purged. And once again, now that we have purged external range liquidity, what do we look for? In this case, it differs a little bit, but the concept stays the same. Internal range liquidity, right? And in this case, we have no premium inefficiency. So utilizing the concept the exact same way, we look for the imbalance as internal range liquidity, which in this case would be this imbalance right here. So from this internal range liquidity, what would we look for again? We would look for that external range liquidity, right? Which would be this range low. And in this case, from here, we trade into the monthly drawn liquidity. And we can see how understanding this concept alone has framed a bias for one and a half quarters of the year. So from here, once we trade into this monthly drawn liquidity using time frame alignment, what would we want to see? see price trade into external range liquidity of that monthly time frame. We would want to see daily structure to prove bullish. So from here, we get the market structure shift that confirms the continuation of the monthly bullish range. And essentially, that brings us to where we are today and why we, I have been so bullish on NQ in November. So from here, we had that market structure shift after tapping into a monthly level. And then once we take external range liquidity here, trade internal range liquidity to so take this external range liquidity, trade back to internal range liquidity. Now I'm looking for that next external range liquidity, which could be this high right here or this high all the way back here. And I'm looking for either internal range liquidity lower or we can just trade straight into that external range liquidity and that's why in my weekly review i have noted that i can see price playing out both ways because i'm expecting price if it is a reversal profile then we would trade lower into a inefficiency on the higher time frames and then reverse higher or we could just do a continuation for that monthly high as external range liquidity Moving on, I wanted to cover the time frame alignment aspect of this concept as structure and order flow is crucial to finding high probability movements from these higher time frame levels. These are examples I have annotated back in July 2023 for back test purposes, but I'll share them with you guys since now I am presenting a lecture on this concept. In this chart, we have Euro USD, where back in July 2023, over here, I looked to the left of the chart and saw the immediate inefficiency we are in right now. So I spotted this inefficiency right here. And I believe over here is where I annotated it. I saw these two wicks reject lower and I wanted to see this external range liquidity tapped into. Once price traded up one more time, and rejected lower did not close above it 
then I was looking for lower prices. And you can see how using this concept alone on your USD, I was able to frame four months of price action because I expected after this one to trade lower, lower into external range liquidity and where would smart money want to offload their position within this RDRB. And because of this RDRB, that's why I anticipated this breakaway gap. So a breakaway gap is essentially a fair value gap that stays open, a liquidity void that stays open or a volume imbalance that stays open. And in this case, we trade into that RDRB, expanded higher, inverted this gap here, this inefficiency. So what I'm expecting now is higher prices and the most obvious strong liquidity to me right now is this high over here at 1.13 or Euro USD. So let's drop down to the daily time frame for time frame alignment so then we can see what's going on within these areas of interest. Once again, all of these concepts like RDRB, breakaway gap will be covered in future lectures. For now, I just want you guys to focus on the time frame alignment and also the internal range liquidity to external range liquidity relationship. Dropping down to the daily time frame. Remember the three things that I mainly look for when we enter a higher time frame level to confirm that lower time frame structure is in alignment with my higher time frame. So let's take a look here where we have that monthly fair value gap, which would be the internal range liquidity and this low over here, that would be the external range liquidity. So just looking at this, if you're a little more advanced, you can already spot a market maker sell model in terms of time frame alignment and looking at structure remember the three things one would be the bpr where we have one balanced price range here where there is a bullish fair value gap and then a bearish fair value gap overlapping each other that would be the balanced price range and then we get a second balanced price range here where there's a bullish fair value gap bearish fair value gap and we create that balanced price range the second thing i pay attention to is the order block right so here we have this bearish order block this up close candle up here paying attention to that open price and i want to see price trade into it and displace lower to confirm that there is a change in the state of delivery into the sell side of the curve and lastly if you wanted to wait for the market structure shift that also works because remember we're using time frame alignment by using that monthly level, you've already determined your bias for the rest of this quarter, essentially. So looking at this market structure shift, once we take it, you can look for highs to sell above, or you can look, wait, you can wait for inefficiencies in the market, such as this in balance right here, wait for inefficiencies and sell off into that external range liquidity. Once we tap into that RDRB, same thing right so we're looking for lower time frame structure one of the three things i look for right so here we have this order block right here once we trade back into it we expand higher so that could confirm the change in the state of delivery and we also have a balanced price range down here where there's this sell side inefficiency and there's a buy side inefficiency so that you have that balanced price range right here. And then we rally higher from that as well. And lastly, we have that market structure shift, which would be this high right here. Once that gets taken out, that would be the market structure shift. If you want to be even safer with a market structure shift, I would suggest waiting for a displacement above this high. So in this case, this first trade over does not look like displacement to me. So I would wait until this candle here, once it trades through that high with a lot of conviction, then we're looking for a continuation higher. And on top of that, now on the monthly chart, we have inverted that imbalance that we were looking at earlier. So that brings me to the conclusion of this lecture covering how I determine bias based on internal and external range liquidity. I hope you all found this insightful. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And as always, have a great day.